So it turns out that XPG decided to send me a bunch of cool parts for a video. I originally wanted to make a cool cinematic video, but I had a better idea. I decided to show you all how to build a gaming PC with no experience. After picking some parts on PCPartPicker.com and ordering them online on sites like Newegg, I was completely ready for the build. Until I realized I ordered a broken motherboard from Amazon and I had to wait two weeks for a replacement. But nevertheless, today is the day I finally get to show you how to build a gaming PC. One of the most underestimated steps within a build is grounding yourself. I usually connect the power supply to a wall socket, turn it on and touch it from time to time. If you're on carpet, I highly recommend using an anti-static strap by putting the alligator clamps on the grills of your plugged in PSU. I usually like to start my builds by unboxing the motherboard and preparing all the necessary accessories that come with it. Don't be afraid to use the motherboard's box as a workspace as this keeps it safe from any debris you might have laying around and acts as an anti-static surface. The main components that are directly attached to the motherboard are things like the CPU, your RAM sticks, the M.2 drive, the graphics card, and arguably your cooling solution. So I decided to go with an i9 10900XE simply because I'm a video editor and I wanted the extra power for this build, but do bear in mind that Ryzen CPUs are the go-to for gaming. To install it, it's important to be really careful as you don't want to damage any of the pins related to your AMD or Intel CPU. Pushing the lever down and moving it out of the way will lift the retention plate and will allow you to carefully place your CPU within the socket. Make sure that the golden triangle on the edge of the CPU is aligned with a triangle or dot at the corner of the socket. The CPU will naturally fall into place and lowering the lever will lock the CPU. Locating the dim slots will allow you to install your RAM sticks but just be aware that your motherboard will most likely have a single set of 4. I ended up going with a total of 4 sticks at 8GB each where I needed the motherboard's manual to figure out which specific slots I should fill in first. Simply open up the channel by pressing down on the clips and align the gap in the RAM sticks with the nudge of the RAM slots. Don't be afraid to push down to make sure they're in place. Then you can proceed to install your M.2 memory which by the way is not the same thing as an NVMe. It's quite easy to locate as they are usually hidden by plastic covers or a plate engraved with some logo. Usually the screws needed to install this are provided within your motherboard box. There's only one way to place your M.2 drive so do not worry about making a mistake. Personally at this point in time I like to start putting everything into the case to make the rest of the process easier. The motherboard attaches to the case with a few screws that were provided within its box. Usually a simple Felix screwdriver will allow you to screw to the case's standoffs. If you haven't electrocuted yourself by now, consider yourself lucky. <laughs> no, I'm joking. By now I recommend you plug all the things that you can into the motherboard first. Using the manual is a life savior as some brands use slightly different layouts for things like the USB 3 connector, your HD panel audio, and the front panel lights and switches. But do not worry, most of the time these tend to be located at the same place. XPG did send me a SATA SSD which means that I need the SATA cable provided in the motherboard's box to connect to it. Now, these connectors are super simple to locate as they usually tend to be super noticeable. With all this in place, we can get rid of our alligator clamp and start installing the power supply. Installing the PSU to the case is a simple process, of course, things might look different depending on your case and the modularity of your power supply. On modular power supplies, I usually like to connect most of the cables needed right away to make things work. A 24 pin cable will be found inside a little bag in the power supply box, as well as a SATA cable and an 8 pin for the graphics card and the CPU, but more on this later. Now, my XPG Battle Cruiser allows me to install their 750 watt core reactor at the bottom of the case. Just please make sure your fan faces the dust filter to draw in fresh air. Don't forget that the mounting screws for this installation will be found in the power supplies box as well. At this point I'm sure the back of your case looks like a total mess and even though my desk cable management is pretty decent, I can never get this to look as good. If available, I always try my best to use some velcro straps or even some disposable cable ties that can most likely be found in the packaging for the power supply. My recommendation is to try and get creative with this and since I have custom braided cables, I need creativity times two. Before moving into installing my water cooling unit, I usually like to plug in the motherboard 24 pin cable, the CPU 8 pin cable and any SATA cables you need to connect. 
The graphics card A pin is the last thing I like to connect but do keep in mind that this does vary as you have the choice to connect more than 8 pins into the GPU. With that out of the way, installing most cooling solutions requires the correct bracket. Correctly positioning your fans for an exhaust intake configuration is important and make sure you gather the required cables needed to make the system work. With most cases, you'll have the ability to install your backplate to your mounted motherboard if needed. With this, you can install your mounting screws which will allow you to attach the water block after of course mounting the radiator into the case. I usually don't mind using the pre-applied paste on these but if you consider overclocking it and you absolutely want the best performance, I recommend getting some Arctic Silver 5 and applying it yourself. And from experience, connecting your RGB fans might take some daisy chaining but the rest of the process simply consists of connecting your 4 pin connector to a CPU fan header, the pump connector to a system fan or dedicated pump connector and your 3 pin daisy chained RGB connectors. The final obstacle left within this build is the graphics card. Depending on your graphics card, you might need to use all 16 pins, 12 pins or just simply 8 pins. It all depends on how much power your GPU needs. But overall, make sure to unmount the backplate and the bracket in order to allow the insertion of your GPU into the PCIe slot. You can always open up the slot to mount your card. I like aligning the I.O. first and making sure I hold both ends of the card to equally insert it. And obviously, don't forget to connect the GPU, clean all the mess you did from building this PC, and get ready for the moment of truth. By now, I hope your PC has turned on and things are working fine. Don't forget to create a bootable USB drive to install Windows and make sure to download all the corresponding drivers for your motherboard and your graphics card. People of the internet, it's been a long day. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel for more. I'll see you in the next video. Take care.